this is actually one of the really sincerely weakest points of Roman Catholic dogma, their position on the papacy. Uh, first of all, the question is, did Jesus actually give us the papacy? But it's not just Protestants that have a problem with the papacy. I would say talk to your Eastern Orthodox friends as well. It's not just Protestants. The Eastern Orthodox might want to have their day in court here as well. And that, of course, is why there was a schism. That's why there's a split between uh, the East and, and the West and Rome. Um, and the papacy is a central part of that. The papacy is a doctrine that was developed over time. It is not ancient. It is not biblical. You could, you could easily demonstrate this just by going through the early writings of the church to demonstrate how they planted churches, who was in control in certain areas, multiple elders and pastors, those sorts of things. No central bishop in Rome at particular points. Um, and at this issue of apostolic secession, you could do that. The more important thing to do is actually to go to the words of inspired scripture to say, does the Bible teach this position? Uh, but the point is, is, I believe truly that, of course, Roman Catholic dogma is easily refuted by the text, but um, this particular point of doctrine and dogma from Rome on the papacy is one of their very weakest, and I would highly encourage you to study it. Again, there's been some great debates on the papacy by um, our own pastor, Dr. James White, with some of the best Roman Catholic apologists that are out there. Uh, I highly recommend his debates he did with uh, uh, Father Mitchell Pacwa. Uh, those are very respectful, very scholarly debates on this issue of the papacy. So for further for further study, go take a look at that stuff. But Jesus gave us the papacy, yet that is commonly rejected. And of course, is Matthew 16, 18 through 19. So let's go to the text. Matthew 16, uh, popular proof text by Roman Catholics. Uh, for the papacy, though it doesn't actually demonstrate the papacy and apostolic secession and all the rest. But Matthew 16 is a popular one. Matthew 16 and starting in verse, we'll start actually verse 16, okay? It's, it goes like this. Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, Messiah, the son of the living God. So that's what Peter says to Jesus. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So what's really important here, this being revealed to Peter is this revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is a spiritual thing. God has entered into time and he has given revelation, special revelation to Peter about the identity of Jesus. So this is a gift from God, first and foremost. It's not flesh and blood that did this. It's it's the Father who's in heaven. He's done this for you, Peter. And so then it says, Jesus says, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Um, now let's take a look here because it's really important in terms of the text itself because Roman Catholics and Protestants, Christians, have the same inspired Greek text. We've, we've got the same inspired Greek text. The official canon of the Roman Catholic uh, communion, Roman Catholic Church, is, is on Matthew the same as ours. Okay, it's a Greek text. It's underneath all of us. And so let's go to the text. Jesus says to you that you are Petros. You are Petros. And he says... It says in the Greek, hati tu, so that is you are, you are hati tu Petros. So you are Peter, second person, you are Peter. And then he says, and on this uh, taute Petra, I will build my church. So he goes from, the text is the same for all of us. Let's make sure we identify that clearly. He says, hati tu, Petros, you are Peter, second person. And on Taute, this rock. So he makes a distinction between you are Petros and upon this rock. So Jesus, very important here, very important. He speaks to Peter, second person, you are this. But upon this distinction, this rock, I will build my church. He doesn't say upon you. 
He doesn't say upon you. He makes a distinction between the you, second person, and upon this. He makes a distinction about what he's talking about. He doesn't say upon you, Peter. He says upon this rock. Now, what was just revealed to Peter by the Father? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he says, and you are Peter, and I will build, and he says, and upon this rock, I will build my church. And so the text is very clear. If we would just let the text speak for itself, he gets the revelation from God. Jesus says, and you, second person, Peter, are this. You're this, you're Peter. And upon this rock, not Peter, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And then he goes further though, and here's where it gets really important. He says, verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And so Roman Catholics love the fact that that's singular. He says, you, Peter, singular. And the answer is, yep, you're right, he does. He says, you, Peter, I will give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, you're bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, the question we can ask here, very importantly, is this. Okay, he didn't say upon you, Peter, I will build my church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven to bind and to loose. The question we should ask again is, where in the gospel according to Matthew does Jesus give keys to Peter? And the answer is, we don't have any instance in the Gospel according to Matthew where Jesus gives the keys specifically and only to Peter. However, that's Matthew 16. In Matthew 18, famous text, many people know. In Matthew chapter 18, the Lord Jesus gives those same keys to the apostles generally and to the church by extension. You know the text, right? It's the text that we often go to to talk about church discipline. Where in verse 15 of chapter 18, if your brother sins against you, go tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. That's Jesus appealing to the law of God and the standard of the law of God of bringing accusations. If he refuses listen to them, to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen to even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. And then Jesus now talking to all the apostles. And again, by extension, the church itself, he says this, truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So Jesus in Matthew 16 says, you are Peter, second person, upon this rock, not you, Peter, I will build my church. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. You'll bind and loose. And then in Matthew 18, Jesus gives that to all the apostles. They have it too. Nothing here about apostolic secession. Nothing here about Peter handing the keys down to the next guy. And again, you could have this debate looking at the patristics, looking at the early fathers, and you can see that they didn't even have uh, the most popular interpretations of this text don't sound like Rome. And that's one of the things that Eastern Orthodox are also raising their hand saying, excuse me, we have something to say about this. So Rome's position on this is something that in history is, is, is a novelty that rises up and it becomes dogma. Um, and it's, I think, one of their weakest uh, dogmas in terms of being able to substantiate it from the text or even from church history. But what's important to note here is that what is Jesus talking about? He's talking about uh, the promises of the gospel of forgiveness, right? And that's given to Peter, it's given to the apostles generally, it's given to the church by extension. The church we have today engages in this very thing, the binding and the loosing. And of course, we can have a secondary discussion here about Jesus and the book of Revelation that is apparently still holding those keys. That's a whole separate discussion. Hey, what's up guys? This is Pastor Jeff Durbin. Thank you for watching Collision. We wanted to provide a solid resource to help you to respond to anything coming into collision with the Christian worldview. There's more as a response to this video and others at Apologia's All Access at ApologiaStudios.com. When you partner with Apologia Studios, you make all of our content possible and we give you all kinds of amazing other content to help equip you and to train you and your friends and families in the Christian faith. And so go to ApologiaStudios.com, sign up for All Access and get more from Collision.